the marketing manager and one of the pilots here at Oz Runways. You might have seen me at some of the fly-ins or industry events over the past few years. And I'm Scott, uh, I am a support specialist and a pilot. Um, if you've reached out to us via email, you've probably spoken to me already. We were invited to attend the RAS conference this time around, uh, but we can't be there in person, but we still wanted to support you guys, so we put together this video presentation for you. Yeah, and there are three sort of key areas we'd like to cover today. And the purpose of those areas is to address any concerns you may have about implementing EFBs with your students students or instructors if you're not already. If you are already, uh, we're going to share some useful tools that we have available in the app that you can start using today. So, can Oz Runways be used in lieu of paper? The answer is yes. CASA has issued Oz Runways approval as a data service provider and this covers both our Oz Runways on iOS and Runway on Android apps. It does mean that you can legally use the aeronautical information supplied by Oz Runways as a replacement for traditional paper products, and this includes in the training environment. However, EFBs can only be used as a situational awareness tool and to aid the primary navigation by reference to the map and to the ground, so don't go hugging the boundary of controlled airspace or rely solely on the GPS in your device as a primary source for navigation. And of course, it should go without saying, but don't use an EFB primarily for IFR navigation. As I briefly mentioned, we offer two apps, Oz Runways on iOS, so that's for our Apple devices, and Runway on Android. We have a dedicated development team for both apps here in our main office in Prospect, South Australia. Probably at least three quarters of Australian subscribers use Oz Runways on iOS on Apple products. The Runway on Android app is about five years younger, so naturally it does, doesn't have quite as many features um, as Oz Runways on iOS and it tends to receive new features slightly later, although this feature gap is absolutely reducing over time and we appreciate our subscribers on both app platforms. Device and size requirements is a common question that comes up for us here in the support team. Although there's no legal requirement around the size of the device you use for your EFB, CASA does recommend a minimum size device of 200 millimeters measured diagonally across, so from corner to corner. This iPad mini sixth generation I'm holding is 210 millimeters. That's good. Uh, the Samsung Galaxy Tab S is 262 millimeters, and both of those two devices we would recommend as a good option for uh, runways on iOS and runway on Android. Much of the functionality in Oz Runways does require your GPS position and for this reason we do recommend choosing a Wi-Fi and cellular model iPad. The GPS is integrated actually with the cellular chip meaning that the Wi-Fi only version of the, versions of the iPad don't have GPS. Also do keep in mind that if you, if you choose to hotspot from another iOS device, this won't provide your Wi-Fi only iPad with a GPS position. It'll only do it intermittently. So please don't go purchasing a Wi-Fi only device expecting a phone to provide your GPS position to the iPad. This just doesn't work like that. Um, so while you don't necessarily need a SIM card to go into your iPad for the GPS to work, there are, uh, there's a huge list of amazing features that you won't have access to uh, unless you have a data connection. So things like NOTAMs, SmartBrief, the radar, and also Oz Runways traffic. So you can get data via hotspot from your iPhone, but setting that up can be fiddly and as I mentioned, it won't give you a GPS position. So the best combination is a Wi-Fi and cellular model iPad and a data plan or a SIM, a prepaid data SIM uh, to go with your iPad. Unlike iPads, however, uh, when it comes to Android devices, you don't need to buy a tablet with a cellular modem to get that uh, built-in GPS in your Android device. Uh, but that doesn't really mean that all of them have GPS, so it's very important that you check, check that part out carefully. Uh, there certainly are cheaper tablets available and they can be found and they do run runway, uh, but they're generally slower and they have a much shorter battery life. So purchasing a high-spec device is always recommended. Okay, EFB safety. A failure in an EFB means the inability to access the data that you require. And we see three main uh, 
avenues for failure. So the first one is a power failure. EFBs and the, and the device you run them from, they're, they're battery operated and as we know batteries have a limited capacity. So we would always encourage you plugging in your device to the aircraft's power supply via a USB power adapter if that's available. If it's not, you can also carry with you in flight a portable power bank and connect that way. Uh, one of the major battery drains for your device will always be the screen backlight. So if you can, reduce the screen brightness to a minimum usable level. This will encourage longevity of that battery. Second thing is failure due to heat. So EFBs can rapidly heat up if placed on, say, the black dashboard of your, air, of your aircraft in the middle of summer uh, in regional Australia. Uh, and if the device does get too hot, it'll shut itself down in an attempt to cool down. So to alleviate this uh, attempt to avoid placing your device in direct sunlight, if that's not an option for you based on maybe a mount you've got inside or a kneeboard, uh, try and point the fresh air vents directly to the device to encourage some more cooling uh, as, you're, as you're flying. Uh, and also if you're jumping out of the aircraft, maybe you've got a refuel part way through or you're stopping somewhere for lunch, just try and put the device out of direct sunlight or take it with you uh, to keep it cool. Lastly, the final failure could be just purely from the absence of data. Um, so arguably the most likely failure mode is not having data available. So this can start with not having the, down, the data downloaded appropriately. Um, it potentially could be the app crashing unexpectedly. Uh, we, don't like, we don't expect that to happen often, but it could be the case. So we would always encourage you to carry some form of backup. If you are using an EFB, this can be in the form of a second a tablet, a iPad or a phone or even paper in this case, just don't rely on a single EFB. When it comes to downloads, there are three key areas that can easily be confused, so stay with me here. We'll break downloads down into three areas. The first one is database, uh, database updates that occur in-app. So this is your in-app aeronautical data. So periodically throughout the year, Air Services Australia maps and aeronautical data will be updated. You can, you can think of this as those loose amendment pages you may recall from the old hard copy days. Uh, and these updates cover the data displayed in places like the URSA, DAPS, AIP and all of your maps, which also include the Oz Runways hybrid VFR map. The second data aspect is the app updates and this is for your EFB itself. Uh, our development team is frequently releasing new versions of both the Oz Runways and Runway apps. And these releases include exciting new features that we really want to share with you, as well as bug fixes that will help improve your app experience and its overall functionality. The timing of these new versions does fluctuate greatly, which is why we do recommend you turn on automatic downloads. However, if you choose to update the app manually, a good rule of thumb is to head to the App Store or Google Play about every fortnight and tap update. This will make sure you've always got the latest version of the app itself. And the last piece here, so the third uh, download thing to download is the device updates. And this is specifically for your phone or tablet or your iPad. So this ensures that you're always running the latest operating system of the device, also known as the OS. So using an outdated OS can significantly slow down the loading speed of your entire device. So this includes all of the other apps you use. Um, and additionally, not all OSs are supported by old devices. So it's certainly important you always have a fairly new and also updated model. Oz Runways has a few tools available that we think will be really useful in a flight training environment. I'm going to go through a few of them with you now. Using Oz Runways for navigation. Now, whilst Oz Runways is a legal source for all of your required charts, map, maps and documents, it can't be used as a primary source of navigation. Having said that, it's still super helpful in pilot training for both the students and the instructors. We strongly encourage pilots to maintain good traditional map reading skills and use the Oz Runways GPS position to assist you in this regard. It must be remembered though that Oz Runways position information is not a replacement for the requirement to fix visually or by the use of an approved navigation system. One thing an instructor did with me recently while I was on a flight review uh, was we turned off the own ship icon on the map screen so we couldn't see where our aircraft was. This allowed us to use Oz Runways as a more traditional paper map 
and get some more experience with looking outside the aircraft for landmarks and using that with our ground speed uh, for navigation fixes. Navigation sometimes sparks a passionate debate in Australia when it comes to EFBs. Some in the industry are advocating for traditional paper maps uh, for navigation, whilst a lot of other people see the benefits that an app like Oz Runways has to offer. An EFB, like any tool available in aviation, can be really helpful for making flying easier, more enjoyable, and realistically, better prepare student pilots for the commercial workforce or for their own private flying. Another handy feature would be reviewing your students' flight logs. This can be a super handy tool for training and debriefing. So all of your students' flight logs uh, will be saved in settings. If you've set your air switch speed to something sensible, we recommend uh, rotate speed minus 10 knots as a good guide, will automatically detect and log your flights. These will then appear in this settings menu that I mentioned before. Note, you will only see your flight there after you are below your air switch speed, not during your flight. All landings, including touch and goes, are automatically logged. Departure and arrival aerodrome is also automatically recorded. Just tap on a log to view and edit the details. And if you have a premium subscription, you can then export these to Log10 Pro. Oz Runways also has a traffic feature called Oz Runways Traffic. This can be handy when you're flying in a busy training area and can be a really useful tool for situational awareness and will provide you with rough locations and altitudes of other users in the area. This could also be used when you're on the ground when you're teaching a student how to enter the circuit or how to join the circuit uh, with other aircraft already in there. Traffic can also be handy when you're sending your students solo as you can keep an eye on them from the comfort of your office chair and make sure that they are actually performing their practice force landings. Oz Runways traffic is good, but having a portable ADS-B device, such as a Sky Echo, is even better. These guys are completely portable with a long battery life, which means that it can jump with you from aircraft to aircraft if your school has more than one in its fleet. An ADS-B in uh, combined with Oz Runways traffic helps create a much clearer picture of what's outside the aircraft. At the moment, CASA has a rebate available for certain aircraft when purchasing an ADS-B device, so now's a great time to grab one from our website. Oz Runways also has the capability to connect to flight simulators such as Microsoft Flight Simulator and X-Plane. These can be a super useful tool for students as they practice their navigation exercises and can help give them a little bit more in-air time without actually flying. I'm not going to go into how to set up these flight sims today as there's a whole lot of information that we need to unpack, but we do have a document on our knowledge base that details how to set up Oz Runways with various flight sims that are out there. And finally, sharing a plan between devices. So Oz Runways has the ability to share flight plans between iPads. Um, now this could be an instructor loading a standard navigation flight plan that they do every day uh, and giving it to their student. Uh, or it could be the other way around, allowing students to do their own flight plan and then share that with their instructor for review and critique. Uh, this is a simple process when you're doing it via AirDrop if you're going from Apple to Apple uh, or you can do it via email if you need to as well uh, if you want to talk between Android and Apple and vice versa. Here at Oz Runways we also offer a custom EFB management tool called Enterprise. This tool is designed for busy commercial operations and training providers. Oz Runways Enterprise lets you safely and accurately manage the device of every instructor at your flying school from one central dashboard. Plus, you can gain access to additional tools like aircraft profile syncing. You can upload every aircraft pro profile with the approved weight and balance and performance information into that dashboard and that'll automatically sync to every instructor's iPad. A useful tool for, for instructors that frequently jump between aircraft types with different students. Also opens up a document library where you can save flight manuals, SOPs, airport procedures, stuff like that. 
We can also have uh, pre-saved navigation routes, uh, which would be accessible to instructors only, making the transition between students painless and professional by equipping you with the navigation plan templates on all the instructor's devices. If you want to give the Enterprise Dashboard a go, uh, we do have a 30-day free trial for it. Uh, all you have to do is give us a yell at support at osrunways.com and we'll be happy to set you up with an account. For those of you joining us in person today at the RIL CFI conference, you'll receive a few copies of handy Oz Runways flyers to take home. They'll include things like an EFB checklist and for those of you joining us virtually, a digital copy can be located inside the app under the document, documents folder. Uh, you're welcome to share this with your students as well. Additionally, you'll find uh, another flyer on downloads, uh, further information on everything you need to know about downloads and getting your head around that. Uh, and lastly, you'll find a quick start guide, and this is useful for pilots of all skill levels trying Oz Runways for the first time and locating uh, where to go to download the app, right up to anyone that's been using it for quite some time, looking for some more in-depth information from the user manual or some of our video tutorials. For the clubs out there who are already on incorporating Oz Runways into their training programs or using it as a tool on the side, and if you're interested in learning more about how to use specific features in the app, as opposed to the general functionality and overview we've shared about EFBs today, we do offer in-person tutorials all around Australia. So if you're from an aero club and you were interested in a 60 to 90 minute time slot with our team, we can provide that in-person demonstration of both our Oz Runways and our Runway apps. And in that time, we aim to cover a lot of the core features, some of the brand new ones, uh, and a sneak peek of what's in development. Plus, we'll be sure to include ample time for your individual Q&As. These events are completely free and can be super valuable for pilots of all skill levels. If you are interested in the Enterprise Dashboard, we also offer corporate training for our Enterprise customers. Thanks for tuning into our presentation today. We hope to see you at an in-person event this year. <laughs>